Have you ever felt like you were doing everything right from watching your diet to working out, but you're just not seeing the results you want to see? Well, let me just tell you this. If you're a short girl like me, it might not be your fault. Unfortunately, our calorie burn isn't the same as someone who is much taller than us, but that doesn't mean you can't reach your goals. With the right balance of nutrition and working out, I'm going to show you guys how to create the perfect calorie deficit that works for you. No extremes, just real strategies. So let's get to it. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sierra, and here on my channel, we are all about creating a life you love. So that being said, we're gonna hop into today's video. So today we're talking about something that is very near and dear to my heart. And so many of us actually struggle with this and we may not even know it, especially if you're on the shorter side and that is calorie deficits. If you are a person who is on their weight loss journey, you've heard the term calorie deficit, calories in, calories out, and it's simple and all this other stuff. But have you ever been in a situation to where you're like, I'm following the freaking calorie counter thing and the, the calculator and my numbers and I'm still not losing weight? Well, it's probably because you might be on the shorter side or you're not actually calculating your calories correctly. So today we're gonna dive into my personal journey. I am officially down 45 pounds and I really had to change the way I looked at weight loss, especially with me being short. I couldn't go on YouTube or Instagram or TikTok and look at these girlies who have these extravagant day in the lives to where they show how they eat all of this food, um, how they don't do any cardio. They only do strength training. Like some stuff just does not work for you. And if you're short, you have to figure out what works for you. So let's go ahead and hop in. First things first, you have to calculate your calories correctly. That was a mouthful. But we have these calorie um, calculators and I'm actually gonna put it up on the screen so you guys can see how to do this correctly. So this is just calories. I mean, this is calculator.net. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in my age. I'm 29, I'm a female, 5'2", short girly over here, and I am 145 pounds. So we see on here it says little or no exercise. It says exercise one to three times a week, exercise four to five times per week, and then it says daily exercise or intense exercise four to three to four times a week. Even if you work out six to seven days a week, like I do, we're not clicking that. It says intense. And when I think people think intense, like, yeah, I'm going intense. I'm working out every single day. But the thing is, honestly, y'all, if you're not an athlete, your workouts probably aren't as intense as you think they are. And if you're only at the gym for an hour, honestly, that doesn't really count as like high intense, like every single day. Like you may have days where it's like way more high intense. Like today I worked out this morning, I did like a strength training video. And then later I'm gonna go do cycling, which also incorporates some strength training inside the cycling class. So this may be considered an intense day for me, but every day doesn't look like this. So realistically you have to put in what makes sense. So um, let me just put that in so you guys can see what calories it actually gives you because this is what I went by before. I personally was working out with a personal trainer who had me strength training six to seven times a week. And I'm like, okay, I work out every day. I have intense workout schedules. So let's go ahead and, um, I don't know what just happened here. Let's go ahead and calculate that 145 pounds. And we're going to do intense workout. So as you can see, to maintain my weight, it says I need to consume 2,305 calories. Mild weight loss, 2,055 calories. Weight loss, one pound a week is 1,800 calories. And extreme weight loss would be 1,300 calories. So you will hear people on the internet tell you, you cannot lose weight on a calorie deficit of 1,500. You cannot lose weight if you drop your calories to 1,200. It's not realistic. It's not sustainable. But baby girl, if you're a short girly, you're going to have to figure out how to make it sustainable. Honestly, and so that would be my calories if I had like intense workouts every day. So I'm going to dial it back to exercise four to, four to five times a week. So let's go ahead and calculate that. So this gives me to maintain my weight is going to give me 1,900 calories, mild weight loss, 1,700, one pound a week, 1,400, 
and extreme weight loss, 957. So I, I would honestly say do not go under a thousand calories for sure. So for me, for me to actually see weight loss, I have to be within that 1200 to 1400 calorie range as far as like what I'm taking in. And the thing is we have this thing called the BMR and that is your basal metabolic rate. And it's basically how many calories your body actually burns at rest without you doing anything. And my BMR, let's see what it calculates my BMR as. Anywho, so my BMR is like around 1,500 calories. So if I were to eat 1,500 calories and that's what my body burns, I probably won't gain any weight. But if I eat over those 1,500 calories and I'm not working out, I'm not burning those excess calories, I'm going to gain weight. And I think that's not what we tell people when we say calorie deficit. We don't think about the factors that come into play when you have a BMR. And even the BMR, might, BMR may not be as accurate as you think. I personally had thyroid surgery, so I have half a thyroid. So my hormones may not be as stable as, you know, a person with a regular you know, thyroid, also people who have PCOS, your BMR may not be accurate either. And it's probably a lot lower than the number that the calculation gives you because this is just an estimate. The only way you would truly know this is if you went to like a place where they did like some sort of like scan, sort of like you can go to a doctor, a realistic view of what your numbers would look like. But I wouldn't say count on these, these calculators we have here. So honestly, when it comes to being in a calorie deficit, the simple terms is you have to burn more than you take in. So if you're eating way over your calorie expenditure, you're gonna have to be working your ass off to burn those excess calories. And if you're a shorter person, I'd, I'd honestly know. say you do need to kick up your cardio a bit. You, need, you do need to be taking extra steps a bit just because like, honestly guys, we just don't burn as many calories as the tall girls or the tall people or the just like bigger people. We don't burn that many calories. So if you are on the shorter side, please find your numbers and figure out kind of what works for you. So like I said, for me, the cal according to the calculator, it says like in order to lose a pound a week, I would have to eat 1400 calories. That is what I do. And I really don't care what the internet says about it not being sustainable because at the end of the day if you want to feel comfortable in your skin you have to do what works for your body and for me my body does not like me having all those those excess calories because I can guarantee you it was a girl on uh, TikTok who was really stressing this um, calorie deficit thing she was like put your numbers in, buy my meal plans. I bought the girl meal plan because the thing said I should be eating 1,800 calories. At that time, I was like 180 pounds. So I was saying like to lose a pound a week, I should be eating 1,800 calories. Like, no, I was not supposed to be eating 1,800 calories. I actually gained weight, y'all. Like, and then, I know y'all seen this girl. I'm not going to say her name, but she was like very big on having her meal plan, selling her meal plans or whatever. Um, she used to go live like every single day and it's just like I had to block her because she would say like oh it's not your thyroid's fault it's not your PCO PCOS it's fault it's just you're eating too much or you're not doing something right and the thing is like if you go according to these calculators they might not be right either so I would say start with the calculator and kind of figure out like what your goal is I mean what your what number it gives you to burn one pound a week Start there, and if you want to do more of an aggressive cut of calories, then you go down to that next number. But really monitor, be strict, be strategic, take in that amount of calories, work out, make sure you're still working out, and then see if that works for you. See if you lose that pound a week. See if you lose more than that pound a week. Because the thing is, if you're eating your calories that you're supposed to eat to lose weight and you're burning calories, you're probably going to lose more weight than the one pound. So I know that seemed like a lot. Let me just put this out here. I'm not a professional either, but I'm just letting you know what worked for me, guys. And we can't eat all that food. We just cannot. And it's like, you will get on here and people have these big elaborate what I eat in a days and like they're eating all of this protein, all of this stuff. And it's just like, how can you realistically eat all that? First of all, because like, it's just a lot of food. And honestly, America has made us become like greedy people because we don't need as much food as we're given in restaurants, even 
what we cook at home. Like we have become accustomed to overeating and it might be time for you to honestly, I'm going to hold your hand when I say this. It might be time for you to honestly dial back the food because that's the hardest part. The food is the hardest part. It says work. It says to lose weight. It is 80% diet, 20%, you know, fitness. So you have to make sure you're doing everything right. You're putting the right stuff in your body and make sure you're moving and it's going to fall off. I know. Sounds crazy, but you just really have to be strategic and figure out your numbers. Next. So next, what I want you guys to do is to focus on nutrient, nutrient dense food. Um, if you lower your calories and you're not taking in like food that has nutrients in it, like if you're going to Starbucks, you're going to McDonald's, like the thing is like you're probably burning most of your calories before the day even really starts. So make sure you're getting in some nutrient dense food. So that will look like veggies, lean protein. And like if you eat lots of veggies and lots of fruit, they're full of fiber and they're going to keep you a lot more full. So if you load up your plate with veggies, if you load up your plate with fruit, like you're going to be more full. And the thing is like, I personally am like vegetarian ish for the most part. I eat vegetarian. I occasionally will have seafood. So like that is where I will add in my protein. But honestly, guys, you have to load up that plate with like, make your plate green, make your plate full of veggies and then add your protein and add your healthy fat and then you'll be good to go. But the thing is like, if you think about it, if you have like, let's say Starbucks, Starbucks in the morning, a sandwich at Starbucks is like 200, 300 calories. The drinks are 200, 300 calories. So like that's already 600 calories before you even walk into work or get your day started. And then if you get to work, if you work inside of a place, like I have a calf in my place, I don't really know realistically how many calories are in the food selection there. It may say something on there and that's based on the serving size. And like, you have to be realistic. Like just because that says the serving size, that doesn't mean that's the serving that you're putting on your plate or that's the serving that if they're serving you that they're putting on their, they're putting on your plate. And also just even think if it's a, a dish, like maybe, I don't know, the only thing that's coming to mind is some sort of like pasta dish. So like, say if it's a pasta dish and they're like, it's 300 calories per serving, that's only if they did the recipe to a T. When you think about it, if other people are making your food, you do not know how many calories are actually in these food items. They may tell you this for like a guide, but if you think about it, they probably put extra butter, extra oils, like all that stuff adds up and that goes against your calories as to what you can have for the day. So I think it's best that you kind of just load up on those nutrient dense foods. So like if you want to have like, you know, people eat like, you know, chicken and broccoli and potatoes and all that stuff, have more veggies on your plate than like anything else and then have your protein and then have your carb. I'm not a person who's afraid of carbs. I will still have my carbs. I can still lose weight with my carbs. So I don't really think about it too much. The only carbs that do kind of give me a problem is carbs that contain gluten, which are like wheat products, pasta, stuff like that. So I do typically have alternatives for those because it just doesn't like my body. And I honestly think it has something to do with the thyroid. People with thyroid problems usually have a sensitivity to gluten. So I mean, I did take a food test a few years back and it did say I did have some uh, sensitivity to gluten, but I wasn't like completely like allergic or anything. So I do have it like here and there, but I try for the most part not to have it and have to ha and have healthy alternative like swaps for myself inside my house. And another thing I'm going to hit on, I do not do this because I could not do this right. If I did it now, it probably would work, but high protein diets, um, they say like you should be eating your goal weight in protein. So it's like if you want to weigh 130 pounds, you should be eating 130 grams of protein. And like, I don't know about anybody else, but it can be hard to get in that much protein for the day. Um, I would say an easy way to get the protein in is to do shakes. I mean, they say it's better to eat, you know, real protein. But for me, 
I'm vegetarian, so it just kind of like never worked. And when I was eating meat, I would always go over my calories because I was too busy worried on like taking in the protein. But it's like you still have to make sure you're hitting your calorie goal. Like I would worry on the, I would worry about the calories more than I would worry about, you know, specific macros because the goal is to lose weight, honestly. And the reason that they say do these high protein diets is because it helps you build your muscle. It helps you maintain muscle, especially if you're doing strength training while you're trying to work out. So muscle essentially helps you burn fat. So it's like these are people who are actively. So if you're actively like trying to build muscle throughout your weight loss journey as well, I would definitely say do the high protein diets. And they also say high, high protein diets actually keep you a lot full throughout the day. And I mean, they do. Like if you're stuffing yourself with chicken and steak and stuff like every single meal I don't know about y'all like I have a slow digestive system and I just could not like I would eat that stuff and when sorry like this is TMI I wouldn't poop for days and it's like my body just cannot like process meat so I just typically try to stay away from it if I do have meat it's usually seafood and it's like maybe once a week guys once a week and that's on the like high side and I'll have like seafood if I go out to a restaurant because I don't like to do like the fake meats. The it's, all, it's like it's all fake. It's loaded up with like soy and all this other stuff, which also hurts and harms your hormones if you're hormone conscious. So I would say if you're trying to do the high protein diet, get good quality protein. So make sure you're getting like chicken that is antibiotic free. If you're doing beef, make sure your beef is grass fed because at the end of the day, we don't know what they're even doing to this meat as well. So be cautious as to what kind of protein you're putting in your body and the quality of foods that you're putting in your body in general as well. So next thing I want you guys to really think about and take note of is you need to move your body, especially if you're short. Like I said, we have that calorie window of like 14, 1500 calories. So even if you are eating over that amount of calories, if you're moving your body, it's probably going to weigh yourself out, but you do need to make sure that you're burning more than you're intaking. And I would say it's best to really closely monitor that. And if you're a person who doesn't really want to closely like monitor calories and stuff like that, or like you don't have like an Apple watch or something that you can actually track your calories, just try to move around. Just move more guys. We get on TikTok and Instagram and there's a lot of like gym bros out there. It's a lot of gym girlies out there and they tell you, oh, don't do cardio, only do strength training. We're focusing on like building muscle and while building muscle is good and all that good stuff, if you're a short girl, you need to be making sure you're doing your cardio as well. So even if you are doing these extensive strength training workouts, you still need to make sure that you're doing at least 20 to 30 minutes of cardio every day, just especially for your cardiovascular health, like your heart. And two, just so you can burn a little bit of additional calories. I don't know about y'all, but like I can burn a lot more calories doing cardio versus like weights. And I know they say, you know, it's all about the energy and stuff, but like, when I do like a strength training workout, I only burn like maybe 280 within an hour, 300 within an hour. But if I'm doing cardio, I can really burn like close to 600, 700 calories in an hour if I'm really like pushing myself. And they say when you do like this excessive cal when you do this excessive um, cardio, you lose muscle mass. And that may be true. I'm not a professional and it could be true. But I wouldn't say you have to do anything super excessive, but just make sure that you're still doing some cardio is what I'm trying to hit on here. Don't just only do strength training. You need to make sure that you're moving your body because that strength training may not be enough calories burned for your expenditure for that day. And like, you don't have to do anything crazy. Like turn on some music, just move around, walk the stairs at your job. I walk laps at my job. Like if I don't have meetings on my calendar, I literally just walk around the building. I keep walking, keep walking. And even if I do have a meeting, I have teams on my phone so I can take the meeting while walking. If it's a meeting that I obviously don't have to present in or something like that, but just make sure you're moving your body, turn on music, dance, like clean the house, just move y'all. Like that is the key to life. Move your body. I think just here in our country, they want us to live this corporate life. And we're just, or or even like with our phones and TV and stuff, like we're just too sedentary. And we need to get into the habit of like moving our bodies a little bit more. 
And um, honestly, I would say it's been easier for me to move my body since moving to Texas. I feel like the weather is a lot nicer for a lot longer. So I can easily just go outside and do like a quick walk, do a quick mile, do a quick two miles. And then it's like I live in a very safe area. So I feel comfortable walking six miles over there. So I know that's crazy. But like if you have a goal, you're going to do what you have to do. So and if you just want to move your body. So, um, yeah, so that is like the whole thing when it comes to the calories thing. Like you, if you aren't cutting your calories as far as like your meals. So say if your calories is like 1400, but you're really eating 1800, you need to figure out how to burn those excessive 400 400 calories so you can actually lose a pound or a half a pound, but you have to be kind of like strategic with it. And that kind of pushes me into my next point is monitoring your portions. Um, this monitoring your portions thing will really have you baffled. Like when you really figure out how much food you're actually eating. So say you get a bag of chips and the bag of chips says like 140 calories, but the serving size is 3.5. So you therefore just ate, I don't know. Let me get my calculator. So 130 times 3.5, that's 455 calories that you just wasted on a bag of chips that probably offered you nothing but carbs, nothing but sodium, nothing but chemicals, no protein, no nothing. Like it's just empty calories at that point. You might, you know, get a little, you know, a little bit of food in you, but like you just ate three and a half servings of chips and it really didn't do anything for you, but take away your calories. So be mindful about like serving sizes. And another thing I would say, especially in the beginning, get you guys a food scale. And I actually think I'm going to get me a, a, another food scale because I want to monitor like more closely my meals and stuff. So I saw this, um, calorie, um, food scale on TikTok shop and it just really gives you a lot more information. It's digital. When I had like a food scale, it was like the old school, like little lines and stuff. And like, I mean, while that still works, it's just not as motivating. It's hard on the eyes. And it's also like, just get something that's digital. And I think it's fairly priced on TikTok. I think it was like 30 something dollars. It's actually also on Amazon. So I'll go ahead and link that down below so you guys can check that out. Um, because you have to monitor how much food you're actually eating. Like you may think, oh, I'm going to load up on chicken and protein, but like you just ate a thousand calories in chicken and protein. And it's like, okay, sure. It is like protein, but like you ate that, you know, in one sitting and it's like, you might be hungry later on. And I know they say protein keeps you full, but just like realistically, just have a food scale so you know how much you're actually intaking because say you didn't eat something that was full of protein that might be a lot more damaging on the body because it's like you didn't eat all these carbs or say you get like a large drink at starbucks and it's like these are calories that are not helping you out so get you guys a food scale so you can kind of just keep track of how much you're actually intaking and if you don't have a um, food scale you can also use my fitness pal it might not be as accurate if you don't have a food scale because my fitness pal still asks you how many servings of something that you're actually having. I also ask sometimes like how many ounces and stuff. So if you do use my fitness pal, I would just say go ahead and get a scale too. But my fitness pal kind of helps you have it in your phone. I don't know if the uh, new um, food scale like links to your phone or anything, but it probably does with all this technology that we have. Another way that you can kind of just do this without like counting and all this other stuff get some smaller plates eat off of a saucer and it's like you're not overloading your plate and then actually give yourself time to digest your food eat your meal drink water or drink whatever you're drinking and give yourself a minute to really figure out if you're full because it's like I was a person who used to eat and eat and eat until I got full but realistically that's not how you're supposed to be eating you're supposed to eat for nutrition you're not supposed to eat to like stuff yourself and honestly it's a very uncomfortable feeling. And now that I don't do that anymore, it's like once I kind of just feel my body even get somewhat close to that, it just, it's not comfortable. And I don't know how I was ever comfortable stuff in my face like that, but anywho, smaller plates might be an easy way for you to help just eyeball it, you know? So my last tip that I want to hit on for you guys is to be consistent and be patient. 
Um, if you are a short girl, I'm sorry, your weight loss might take a little bit longer than other people. And it's really because you have to figure out the math. You really have to figure out what works for you. So figure out your calories, figure out how much you need to be moving to burn, extra calories, like really take the time to figure that out. Because once you figure that out, you know how much you're supposed to be eating, you know how much you're supposed to be moving, it's just gonna fall off. But we can't go to the internet and look to see what other people are doing because we can't have that much, guys. I'm sorry, we just cannot. Um, and I will also say another thing to keep in mind is to focus on non-scale victories. Um, for me, um, I've been sitting at like in my 140s for I would say maybe two weeks or so. Um, really sitting at that 144, 145. But today, I'm going to show you guys this. Well, you can't see. You can't see, but I'll insert a video. I am wearing a size small in dress pants. Like I literally have on a size small and some slacks. That is literally crazy to me, y'all. Like, I've never thought like that I would be in a size small. So really start to focus on like how your clothes fit and things like that, how you look in pictures, take progress pictures. Because another thing is like I have trouble with like being comfortable with my arms. Um, they're still, they still like fairly big, but they're a lot smaller than what they were. So right now I am specifically focusing on, you know, adding more strength training into my workouts because I had to lose a lot of fat first just for my brain, like mentally. Um, I'm a person who kind of just struggles with the number on the scale. I struggle with like a little bit of body dysmorphia. So I had to lose a few pounds before I could even focus on muscle because if I saw that scale number like go up, I would get discouraged and that wouldn't stop me from like working out, but that might just hinder like my calories and how much I'm eating because I'm taking like, it's taking such an emotional toll on me. So you can't really focus on that. And I'm telling you guys this to you, um, don't focus on the scale. If you have a problem with like numbers and like sensitive to that, I would definitely say like go to like therapy. They have therapy for these kind of things that I'm actually looking for. So if you know anybody, let me know. But um, yeah, it's a lot. And it's not as simple as like what we would see the tall people doing. And I hate to call them like the tall people, but it's like, they still calculate their calories, but theirs might be a little bit more accurate. I just feel like when you're shorter, the height doesn't the height doesn't resonate with the calculators or something. Or it's honestly just typically it's just a lot lower or you're just miscalculating. Like I said, in the calorie calculator, I do work out every single day, like six, six days a week. But if you put that in the calorie calculator, it thinks that you're doing intense workouts. And while I may think that I'm doing intense workouts, working out for an hour every day is not really intense, guys. I mean, sure, you might burn like 400, 500 calories, but if you're taking in way more than that, it really doesn't even matter. So be realistic with what you put in the calculator, put what you actually put in the calculator. If you feel like you don't even burn a lot of calories in your workouts, if you are a person who is like overweight and like, just physically you can't like push as hard right now put little to no exercise in your calorie calculator and then go by those numbers do not do not do not click every day do not click intense and this is for the short girls i don't know what y'all tall girls do i don't know what works for y'all but this is for the short girls so these are some things that have worked for me like i said i am down 45 pounds so, I mean, it works for me. Um, I know weight loss can be such a like touchy subject. It can be discouraging, but honestly, once you kind of just get it in your head, like you have no other option, it's just gonna work out for you, honestly. Figure out your numbers, move your body, nutrient dense food, be consistent, and just really believe in yourself. And I promise you guys, you're going to start dropping this weight. Okay, um, so we have four months left in the year. So if you guys are like trying to reach a specific goal, like weight loss goal by the end of the year, try to take some of these tips into effect here. 
Um, I really hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope you guys really love the information that I gave out today. I hope this information helps somebody. And if you know any girls on the shorter side, on the petite side, who are struggling with weight loss and they feel like they've tried everything, send this to them. Because when I tell you guys, I have done personal training, I have done high protein workouts, I have done strength training, like I have done like every single thing you can possibly think of, it didn't work until I really sat down and crunched my numbers and got realistic about what I actually put in there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye. Kissing in Paris, I guess we could do it in French. Wow. Eating lo mein, it's child for now, child, child. She got me wildin' now. Rory Italian, child for now, child, child. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she making that shake, breaking that bait till the bed.